Uh, there's a forward looking statement that we want to make uh, you just guys l like just look into it for once and uh, that'll be it so this simply states please don't make any buying decisions based on to this and this contains copyrighted material and blah 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 so you just please read it and based on that only you go ahead with it all right uh, first of all let's talk about syntexa so syntexa uh, is basically a like syntax is a salesforce crest uh, as uh, crest earlier called as gold consulting partner of salesforce uh, we are catering to 14 different industries across 20 countries out there in the world and we what makes syntax are different in the salesforce ecosystem is its multi cloud and cross cloud capabilities of uh, salesforce uh, implementations and salesforce uh, technologies and salesforce clouds basically and we are an approved isv partner as a, as well as a link partner and here are some stats uh, which you can look into uh, which kind of define and kind of not define us <laughs> anyways so uh, i'm your host uh, shrey uh, i'm the ceo at syntex as well as a director at s2 labs which is a pure play salesforce training company and i'm also a creator at salesforce hulk because of which you know this face very well uh, because somewhere here and there you might have uh, gone through some of my videos created onto salesforce admin or developer while you were learning it along the way if you were learning it at that point of time and right now we have Jagrat Maheshwari who's a Salesforce app exchange expo expert working with Syntexa for a very long time uh, so how are you Jagrat I'm good how are you I'm good are you excited yes or nervous uh, not now <laughs> later on when are you going yeah. to be <laughs> so later going to be all right you're going to be you're, you're so sure that you're later going to be nervous everyone get nervous all right uh, so how about we start with a little bit of your introduction uh, before moving ahead Sure. Thanks for that. And uh, myself, Jagrat, and uh, I'm Salesforce App Exchange expert over here at Syntexa. And my core role is to convert the idea of a business into a reality or into an application where they can utilize or sell that to a particular customer and fulfill the other business needs. So, and I have a lot of extensive experience and converting into this. And I have worked on multiple projects which if I come to a start, it's about more than 20 applications. I've uh, helped the clients to uh, come into the uh, uh, marketplace, say App Exchange Marketplace. To go live onto the App Exchange Marketplace. To go live on the App Exchange Marketplace. And even I've uh, helped our internal team to build a in-house applications. There are different in-house applications which we have, like Charge On and uh, Incentivizer and Art Merchant. So I'm the core person in the app exchange. Team. So you're the leader who leads all of the app exchange ideas yes. that we have yes, in yes, Syntex yes. as well. Yes. All right. So so you so you're kind of a founder for uh, Charge On, Easy Incentivizer, uh, this Arch Merchant tool, and yes. numerous other products that we have launched. Yes. All right. And you've helped so many companies. Along uh, apart from this, what what is something uh, interesting about apart you? Apart from this, I'm also leading the development team and working on pre-sales uh, team of our Syntexa and uh, have a one to one conversation with client and understand their requirement and building a POC building the MAPs building uh, building solutions for them art, uh, designing architecture for them so these are the some of the core responsibility other than app exchange as well I, I have in Syntexa all right that's great uh, so let's talk about today's agenda so and today in this webinar we're going to talk about what is Salesforce App Exchange, uh, why you should sell your SaaS application on Salesforce App Exchange. Then we're going to talk about breaking the myth of who can sell on App Exchange, and there are so there are so many myths out there uh, in the world about who can sell on App Exchange. We are going to bust each one of them one by one, at least the major ones. How to turn your Salesforce App Exchange idea into reality, which is exactly what Jagrat has said that he has got an expertise into. Uh, then types of solutions that can be published on Salesforce App Exchange. Then how you can generate uh, and there are different ty types of solutions, uh, not just apps that you can publish on App Exchange. So we're going to talk about all of those different types of solutions that we can uh, publish on Salesforce App Exchange. Then we're going to talk about how you can actually monetize all of those applications and can generate revenue for yourself and for your business. Then uh, we'll talk about the pricing model of Salesforce uh, for security review and the listing fees and everything, all, all, all of the costs involved uh, in order to get your app listed onto App Exchange uh, from security review to whatever listing and everything. Then we're going to talk about how Salesforce App Exchange can boost your application's marketing. Uh, so yeah, here we're going to talk about how you can actually get it into the market and do the marketing a little bit better. Uh, uh, for security review and the listing fees and everything all, all, all of the costs involved uh, in order to get your app listed onto app exchange uh, from security review to whatever listing in it 
what exactly how we are going to charge them how we are going to like uh, maintain the licenses and everything this is something that we're going to talk about in here and then we're going to talk about how to choose the right app exchange development partner uh, what are the key factors or the key criteria that you should look into in order to find out the right app exchange partner and after that we'll be entertaining some Q&A sessions which is exactly what makes me so excited uh, so yeah that's basically what the, what the agenda looks like today seems like a lot right yes we have a good amount of it. we have a good amount of it so we'll not waste much of our time and uh, we'll d go ahead directly uh, into it and we'll start it and we'll start with what exactly is the salesforce app exchange so in a layman's term uh, shall i go ahead yeah sure. all right uh, so in a layman's term i think salesforce app exchange is nothing different than and and a marketplace for saas applications right so like google play store is app is a marketplace for android applications similarly app store is for the ios applications if you talk about if you talk about saas applications typically on salesforce, salesforce built on salesforce uh then salesforce app exchange is the marketplace for that yeah and uh, salesforce app exchange marketplace is a big marketplace where yeah, we have lot we have all the salesforce customers who are already utilizing salesforce capability hmm. and we show them the uh, by publishing our applications or publishing the applications which support their business needs to increase their revenue somehow in, in at the end of their uh, business cycles mm -hmm. so our application or solutions which providing some value to them their business so this is what we are helping or what we can help through building an application on publish it on app exchange, app exchange. and they can utilize and there are different type of people who can actually uh, build build or get a list app application listed on top of it yes. so there are isvs which we call as independent software vendors yes. uh, they can also get it created and there are partners as well partners. who can uh, who can create a solution uh, for it's a predefined problem implementation partner we can say ha huh, it's it's so similar to syntexa yes so if if uh, a company like syntexa is creating uh, an application so that that falls more towards the partner side but even if you do not if you if uh, even if you're not a salesforce consulting partner or, or any partner uh, as an isv you can still launch your application we are going to talk about that later in our uh, webinar i know i'm i'm too early to talk about it but uh, this is exactly what it does and uh, not just this but it's it acts as a marketplace for business applications that's primarily what yeah, salesforce app exchange is we can, have, we can say all right it makes sense or uh, next is why you should sell your saas application on salesforce app exchange so there are different re different way, uh, reason why you should sell your saas application on, on uh, salesforce marketplace because i already mentioned salesforce app exchange salesforce app exchange one thing is about the large customer base because more than 8000 customers or it may be a mo number more but many customers or many organizations are already utilizing the salesforce and they are running big business over there and it's a broader level of uh, brand exposure that if you are a small company you are giving uh, building a solution then you can expose to a you can present yourself on a big large scale that's a another point to have a brand exposure and then it's going to be a simplified sales so if you are building some solution and you monetize them you get some revenue you get some sales from it you get some leads from it to run your your business properly and increase your uh, business life cycle as well so all what you're trying to say is that uh, let's say that we are trying to create a product uh, this product helps people charge their phones a little faster yes and uh, we have created it mm -hmm. we have created our own website mm -hmm. Uh, we have this product up and ready which is very good uh, very good in the product market fit as well and uh, now after creating this like electrical charger that we have created uh, for the mobiles to get get charged faster mm -hmm. we are not uploading it uh, or what we are not listing it on uh, marketplaces like amazon we should uh we should. we should because people do not generally search on they, they don't know the capability of your product and how exactly they, how, they how, how will the how how the world is going to get to know about your product you need to be visible out there yes. but you can you cannot just shout out loud you just cannot run ads and everything and you can expect people to come to your website and buy it from there that's not going to happen so it but always, in it always like in a good audience like a right audience where you should sell your application as as you mentioned about the uh, charger thing charger thing it's a amazon is a right place that there are many customers who are utilizing so similar the app exchange product what we have it's a salesforce marketplace app exchange marketplace is a right place to uh, right audience to sell them hmm. so that's that's one of the ecosystem point because there are different architectures there are different admins in the salesforce ecosystem where 
where they understand and analyze your applications or different multi other applications as well so it's a good good way to present it and uh, along with that you need to upgrade uh, based on the new new features which the sales was also giving if you are uh, compatible your application is compatible then it's going to be a good add on to your business or good uh, add on to your features but it's if it's not then you have to reinvent your product or uh, uh, get a good feedback from the customer and then uh, enhance more so these are the things which we need to understand and why should we go because it's a big ecosystem on the uh, marketplace so uh, so yeah, everything summed up uh, if you are already selling something where people are already present it's easier yes the platform supports you in a lot of ways uh, not just by allowing you to you the access to this big of an audience but also uh, by having pre built solutions pre built things uh, that the that whosoever is listing the application requires and needs and the complete management of the life cycle of that application and then and the, and the customers experience as well so you do not have to work on to all of those things which is going to save you a lot of time energy and money built for you. it's already built for you so that's uh, that that is the exact same reason why one should think about uh, building an building a saas application on top of salesforce and should get it listed on salesforce app exchange sure all right now let's talk about the myths like the the clear myths of who can sell on salesforce app exchange so let's start one by one number myth number 1 only salesforce partners can sell on app exchange i don't think it is true In fact, uh, a lot of people who already have some applications built, and who want to serve their customers who are using Salesforce platform, on Salesforce platform, what are they doing? They are creating a Salesforce App Exchange app, getting it listed over there in order for those users or those or those uh, customers to integrate between these applications. Yes. Like let's say. Uh, PayPal. I'm just quoting an example. Please don't uh, take it that way. Like let's say PayPal. PayPal has created a payment gateway application, and in this case, uh, PayPal uh, there are there are business users who are using PayPal and they want to get the data of PayPal into their Salesforce CRM. Mm. So now PayPal can get this uh, application uh, created, in which the Salesforce or uh, the customers of PayPal who are using who are also using Salesforce yes. can integrate both of them easily with the help of their application. So that's one way of it. Yes. Another way of it is uh, people who are who have an idea for a particular problem out there in the marketplace and uh, who want to build uh, like and and for, uh, uh, for a particular problem in the marketplace or in a particular industry and they want to create a solution for that and then they want to get that application listed for uh, the salesforce customers or for some other people who also want to use it so they can also create applications on top of salesforce app exchange rather than just the partners like us yeah right? and any individual who have a idea and have a some development skills they can build it is, is it complete is it absolutely necessary to have development skills in order to list an app exchange application uh yeah if you are whole and soul person who is uh, so, so so then why are these pdo partners there <laughs> but it, the pdo partner is basically the subject matter expert we'll talk it. about pdo partners later <laughs> <laughs> but yeah i i think uh, anyone who just has an idea and uh, has the access to the right team hmm. who can help them build an application and get it listed on top of the app exchange uh, platform can get it done as long as they understand they, they, the problem and the solution they do not need to be technical like a hard code coder or something like that they need to understand the problem that they are trying to solve and, and the potential the solution. solution for it yes. is that what you what you are yes, trying to yes. say all right makes sense next myth so it's a app exchange is only for enterprise level application i don't think so it's it's for because there are may variation of uh, customers they have small business customers big uh, big company big enterprise level company and there are different different type of solutions so it's totally a myth that you only able to publish big application which have lot of integration or having some top notch uh, uh, architecturing and having enterprise level solutions no uh, you you can list your basic solution as well like you have some unique dashboards those also can be published on on app exchange as well so you can build uh, full fledged applications which is solving or connecting many other platform and even you can solve some basic uh, uh problems, problems like commission calculation yeah problems <laughs> like commission calculator so it it varies and it's not like that you cannot publish we can publish it all right so uh so it's it's not just for enterprise level applications no, it's for anything it's for anything, anything and everything that any business user wants to use into their industry 
yes he's a good to go and this all the problems and and of course <laughs> otherwise who is going to so, uh, use it selling on app exchange requires a significant upfront investment all right this is a this is a question that i guess get asked a lot of times uh, but the answer of it is no i mean i mean first of all it's it's subjective what is significant level of investment for uh, an individual but to be very honest it's uh, it's not like that you just need the right team yes to uh, to pro- provide you a prototype of the uh, idea that you have and the problem that you're trying to solve with a potential solution and after creating that prototype uh, getting the minimal viable product or getting the uh, poc what we call as yes. uh, getting that ready and uh, after creating the mvp you can actually get it listed and test out there in the, into it, it into the market whether it is working fine or not and based on to the interaction that you'll be having with your potential customers or initial customers you can then r- regularly get it upgraded with next releases next upgrades with more features and everything rather than just creating all of the application and then getting it listed it's better to just start with the minimum uh level and then get it upgraded on uh, on a regular level on, a, on yes. yeah in regular phases and i think so that would not require regular, regular customer feedback uh, which we enhance to the product it is going to uh, make make the product better because uh, in the cont- continuously changing and innovative times that you are in yes. uh, customer requirements are also changing a, a lot of times right so you cannot gather it at once so you need regular improvements on to it and if you'll start with that only uh, that'll not require significant amount of investments uh, hence it is going to be a better way to go about it all right app exchange is a one time effort so as we we already cover some of the bits of uh, app exchange is one time effort or not because uh, what we understand that uh, we build a solution and we list it and we are done no it's not like that it's a it's a continuous habit to enhance it because if you are not going to enhance your product then you may be losing the market or you may be losing the audience because there are many other competitor and many other similar solution going to be so we need to understand that there is a uh, loop when we are we publish it we have a beta testers and the uh, potential customers who are utilizing we understand and we uh, we ask them what what uh, uh, how you are utilizing what best it is how you are face any are you any facing problems and based on those problems and challenges we understand the next road map and next solutions and next ideas about the our uh product to feature it so it's not one time effort it's a regular practice to enhance the product it's a recurring job i guess yes. i mean it's a it's, it's a yeah. recurring job to ha. maintain it to maintain it yes. uh, of course you can get it up and live in just a couple of not couple of months but a yeah, uh, couple of sprints i would say not yeah. couple of sprints i also i should say but yeah you can get it live uh, as soon as you want it to uh, to be live but uh, based on to the continuous feedback that you'll be getting from your customers and the feature upgradations bug fixes uh, new additions improvements into the uh, into the re- application it's a really cycle which we can uh, which we have to follow which we need to maintain uh, that is going to keep us above the competition competitive edge that yes. uh, might get generated if you have some competitors out there in the market and or if you are going to potentially have some competitors after your application is going to perform really well yes all right uh, it is difficult to get noticed and succeed on the app exchange it's absolutely a false statement why imagine building a again let's take about uh, take an example of that charger again uh imagine building the best charger that is out there but not getting it listed on amazon what are you going to lose the audience pool that is already available onto amazon which do not want to uh sign up onto your website as a user even if you have the best website best user experience onto that website not many users would like to like sign up onto your application in order to get that charger right until unless it's it's really out there in a hype they basically they trust the amazon ha i mean it's a go to place they understand that okay this is a product and it's uh, selling a good product and so fulfilling our need exactly so if you want to d- if if you really want a drill machine you would go to home depot right if and if the mm-hmm. if you are even if you are uh, building the best a uh, drill machine that is out there if it is not listed out there in home depot what use uh, or what market are you going to capture right that's exactly what right. it is and uh, and that's similar to uh, and that's exactly what applies to our sales app exchange as well uh, if you are building a saas application and if you're not getting it uh, listed onto the one, onto one of the most popular business uh, marketplace that is out there which is app exchange of course mm-hmm. Uh, what exactly are you doing <laughs> so <laughs> so it's not difficult in fact it's easy in fact salesforce itself pro- helps you uh, align some account managers to get your listings together uh, and we call that as partner account manager partner account right uh, pam uh, 
they align you with a pam uh, who also wants uh, this application to be visible to the potential customers because of course they are going to win if you're going to win uh, and i i guess you know that right uh, so if if you're going to list the, uh, your application on top of the salesforce platform they are also going to uh, i mean get, get a share out of it if your application is going to make some bucks so they want you to succeed and in order for you to succeed they have created uh, different marketing uh, materials they have gu- guided they've got trailhead badges and everything in order for you to do everything the best way possible in order to get your application up and live and visible to all of the people out there so believe me it's just the opposite pricing on the app exchange must be high uh, no you sure yes tell me how so basically it's it's uh, it depend on the feature Mm-hmm. It's not going to be always a uh, that if you're listing your app application on app action, it's always going to be high. It varies according to the solution and the business. Mm-hmm. If you, and even you can publish a free application as well. It's not bounded that you only need to uh, have a paid application. It's you can publish free application and also you can pay uh, publish paid application. But it varies if you're a uh, like having a small solutions and and uh, not big complex uh, uh, architecture and and everything you can sell it out in a, in a less amount not that uh, uh, millions of dollars millions <laughs> of dollars and even if if you're thinking that uh, this is going to be uh, like high pricing uh, applications you are oh, you are only allowed to publish it's not you can uh, you can publish any price range of applications got it All right, let's talk about what is ISV and OEM. So I I guess we have covered all the myth. Yeah, we have. Do you still have some myths that you no, want no. me to bust for you? No. Do you still have some? No, no, no. All right. Any anyone amongst the audiences? Audience? There's one. Le- 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 uh tell us. In the comment, can you please show it us? If an application is free but later it changed to be to a price, will the customers who already installed it for free to have it paid or continue with it for free only new customers pay so it i guess depends uh, all right let's so it's basically have the experts uh, right on, on to it believe that uh, whenever you are converting any free application to paid you have which to we recently did yeah which we recently did with charge on and uh, uh, but you you need to go for the compli- compliance because they they pricing compliance and due diligence we need to sign up and then the new version which you are going to publish that is going to be published as an uh, paid one paid one and you need to deprecate the old version and inform the customers that okay we are going to deprecate this uh, older version and you need to come up with a uh, like we have a paid application which is going so to So now you have to pay if to in order to use it with the new features yes. that we have launched yes. else you'll not be able to use it yes. so this is one case let's talk about this so uh, like let's say thousand, uh, there are 200 customers who are already using it mm-hmm. uh, you have launched a paid application with new features extra everything and everything uh, 100 of them want to uh, w- want all of these features but the rest 100 uh, i mean but the rest 100 uh, amongst those 200 or let's talk about 150 want to pay for with the new features because of which you have created these new features and uh, you are asking your customers mm-hmm. to pay for it and these 50 don't want to pay for it and you have not deprecated the older version for it so will they will, will these 50 who have not upgraded it to the newer version will be able to uh, use it without paying any any amount of money no they'll not be able to use it so all right it's either paid or either free yes it's 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 nowhere in between no. if right. uh, like if they are going to upgrade it by their own they need to uh, get some features enabled by by the company who is providing those uh, those applications because we can maintain it and uh, uh, those features are going to be paid so you need to pay for those applica- pay for those features when you are going to no no, no but but what about uh, the people who, uh, what about the 50 people who are using it and do not want the new features they they are good they're good they, they don't have they to, don't pay need to pay for it so and and we have not deprecated the older version no. still it's going to be working it's going to be working yeah that, so that's exactly yes. what i'm asking no i mean if so, so see in the situation where you are deprecating the older version and you are forcing your customers to pay for the newer version you will have to get it paid and the the people who do not want to pay will not be able to will no longer be able to use it but in the case you're not deprecating the older version but are releasing a newer uh, version where the customers will have to pay you are allowing your customers to pay for it if they want to 
if they really want new features everything in a better way uh, whatever the changes that have been made onto that application and the ones who do not want to pay can still use the existing one so it is completely into our control, our control yes right. that's exactly what you're yes, saying all right i i i hope uh, the person on got the answer to the question can i single handedly create an app exchange product and sell it uh, or i need a team so see it completely depends on to the product that you want to create or it completely depends on to the application or the solution that you want to create and the time that you want to invest into it so uh, no matter if you want to create a big application and you are willing to spend 2 years into building it and getting it uploaded onto app exchange uh, i mean go go ahead good luck <laughs> get it uh, i mean i mean in all what you, all what if all what you have is your time and not money to create an app uh, uh, create an application and get it listed on app exchange then it's all yours the, the like the the ground is all yours uh, in fact you can uh, i i think you can do better job while doing it on your own when you have your own idea but if you have a team the things gets faster you get more clarity you get more views on to what and what should not be done and uh, and even if you are not familiar with salesforce ecosystem <laughs> it you are going to like struggle you're going to struggle a lot so uh, one and a half years or at least two years yes. are going to get spent into learning salesforce first then ra- rather than just getting things implemented uh, for the pro- for the problem that uh, getting things implemented as a solution for the problem that you're trying to solve yeah hope that answered the question uh, do we still have some in uh, some others i i think uh, we should entertain these questions in mid as well shouldn't shouldn't we Uh, no, we should not. <laughs> uh, that's why we have kept the question and answer session, right? So let's let's move ahead. Let's move ahead. Let's not uh, lose our track. What is ISV and OEM? This is one of the most important things that one needs to learn if you are a part of this webinar. So stay tuned. So ISV and OEM is different partnerships. That one is uh, uh, as I stated. Partnerships with. Partnership with Salesforce. All right. You can either uh, associate yourself with Salesforce as an ISV, ISV or, or an OEM. OEM. So ISV, as name stated, that independent software vendor and OEM is original equipment manufacturer. I'll start with an example that uh, uh, OEM, not an example, but explanation about what is OEM first. So a- OEM is those who embed their uh, solution on top of Salesforce platform. They are not uh, majorly targeting the Salesforce ecosystem or customers. or they the audience are not salesforce customer who are using the salesforce but they provide a solution for general uh, businesses as well who are not aware of salesforce they don't know about the salesforce but still they have their solutions to sell them or or provide a solution to uh, for their business on top of salesforce platform that comes under the oem and isps are those companies and those developers who uh, build and sell their applications who are the already existing customers of Salesforce for the for the already for existing app yes. uh, customers of Salesforce. Yes, yes, yes. Huh. So this is the core difference when it comes to the ISV and OEM. And as we also have a uh, we we are an ISV partners. So we majorly work with our Salesforce already Salesforce customers who who are utilizing Salesforce for their business. But they do have an idea, and they do have some uh, uh, new ideas about the business so, uh, business solutions and we build a application for them so that's why we we called us as a isp partners so and let me explain uh, uh, yeah please yeah. continue 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 and and again it's going to be uh, different different pointers when it comes to the isv and and oem it's going to be application ownership where you are the whole soul uh, owner of the application but when it comes to the oe uh, oem you are going to be uh branding along with the uh, salesforce that uh, uh, along with salesforce functionalities you are going to pull up your solutions and your uh, your package into it and then you can sell it and uh, there are different marketing platforms or different marketing strategies that uh, uh, when it when you are a oem you are individual whole and soul responsible person to do the marketing your salesforce is not going to much support it but when you when they're going to be a customer uh, more customer onboarded or utilizing salesforce may help you to do the marketing but when it comes to the isv salesforce help you whole and soul because they have their big ecosystem which is a app exchange uh, marketplace where they sell they they do the seos they do the uh, marketing of of your applications as well and they even pitch your solution pre built solution to the many customers as well so it's a different uh, variations when it comes to the isv and oem got it 
uh all right if you if if i want to exp- if if you want to really explain it into an easier term right uh let me take an example and explain it to you and you please let me know whether i am correct with this or not right let's say uh you want to build an application that uh, provides a solution to all of the real estate uh, agents uh, or all of the real estate businesses uh, who are using salesforce crm so if you are trying to create that application which is going to be listed on salesforce app exchange which the salesforce crm users would want to install into their salesforce crm then in that case you are uh, associating yourself as an isv, ISV. right that's right. what it is you are, I, am i correct yes correct. all right let's talk about oem in this case imagine you are an insurance uh, you you are an insurance solution provider uh you you are a technology geek and you have an idea of creating an application which serves the insurance industry whether or not they are using the salesforce platform is none of your concern yes you just want to use the salesforce platform's core capabilities and then create your own application on top of that platform mm-hmm. where no branding no nothing of salesforce is even going to be realized by the end consumers or end, or the end users and you're going to package that solution as your solution rather than salesforce, salesforce. crm's extension yes. so in that case if you're going to create a solution for the insurance companies out there where you are creating a complete custom application but you are just using the salesforce platform at its mm. core and packaging it as on, only your solution mm. then you are an oem yes is this exactly what the difference yes. is all right makes sense uh and let's talk about we have already covered the sales and marketing part of isvs and yes, oems all right in the case of isvs uh The, the the marketing part and the sales part is already being covered uh, covered because all of the salesforce uh, end users cons- customers consumers search for those solutions and applications on in, inside the salesforce platform right in in the salesforce app exchange, app exchange. but for the oems they have a dedicated market they uh, have their own team they need to set up their own team to do it all all alone they are not uh, because they're, uh, they they they've created a solution not just to target each and every salesforce crm user but it it must be it's a specialized thing hmm. uh you 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 might have created a uh, a solution uh for a specific market yes for a specific industry for a specific type of business or for a specific size of business so accordingly you have to align your own sales and marketing team to put in the efforts in order to get your application realized by the marketplace yes. and uh, this all in all of course a lot of job but uh, yeah this is basically the difference between isvs and oems technical agreements and there are going to be different technical agreement because as you go for the isv you have salesforce infrastructure to work on uh, like you already have a salesforce infrastructure and on top of that you can build any any type of custom application but you have, when you come to the oem you are not having uh, salesforce that core uh, features which is already in the crm but you have some basic understanding or basic platform to build your solution on top of it, on top of it and when it comes to the relationship that isv has different partnership relationship and uh, uh, oem partners are closer with salesforce because they are selling along with salesforce that they are providing a platform uh, with the, uh, salesforce platform with their solutions as well so they are closer more closer with the, uh, salesforce and when it comes to revenue generation that isv typically work with uh, uh sale of licenses sale subscriptions of license and everything and subscription and oem is going to be revenue sharing model that if we are generating this much x amount of revenue then maybe you're getting the percentage of of that so there are different different variations and and having isv and oem partners is is it's a way way, way to different, different job but but it all comes under this yes it all comes under product engineering right it's product all, development yeah it's a part of a product uh, development, development team oh uh, yeah uh and the, uh, here uh, are written good examples for uh, both isvs and oems uh, docusign and financial force which which completely describes describes uh the difference between isvs and oems all right how to turn your salesforce app exchange idea into reality in this particular thing we are going to talk about the step by step guide of what are the steps involved in order to convert your idea into a reality the, and reality is nothing but getting your app exchange application live on to the platform and earning some money out of it so shall we start yes so right. uh, it's going to be like step by step guide which we are going to understand it and it's all whenever we are working on any product it's always start with an idea 
that one person is thinking this idea to solve this solution. It always starts from that. So again, when it comes to the idea, what idea? Defining the idea. Defining the idea, defining the solution. What are you trying to build? Why are you trying to build? And for whom, whom are, are you to trying to build? There are three major questions which we always understand or cater when it comes to the idea that what is your audience? What purpose you are solving? And why uh, why you are trying to build it? Like it's for it's about the purpose solving. And when it comes to the idea, after idea, you need to design that idea into a technical aspects. Architecture designing is also a key part. Uh, of uh, uh, next step of uh, listing uh, building an application so the second step is architecture design yes. the first step was setting the idea yes. in setting the idea there were three pointers what are you trying to build what, so what is the problem that you're trying to solve what is the, what solution? Is the solution and why you are trying to why are you trying to solve it now for whom are you trying to solve it brother whom, what why no <laughs> all right you continue so what are you trying to build uh, why you, why are you trying, trying to, to build, build it and for whom you are trying to build all right makes you sense second uh, step so second is going to be uh, architecture design that uh, in architecture design is basically when it comes to, uh, its majorly role of mine where we understand the uh, salesforce capabilities and and, and uh, what product or what vision they are having and what uh, product they want to build and their timelines how much time it would going to be and what is the roadmap of it how what resources needed to build those solutions and again it's going to be uh, aligning the development teams that whether you have to uh, uh, get a in-house your in-house applications or in-house team is going to build that application if you are having the capability or if you are partnering with any other company or if you are outsourcing any uh, any of the features or any other development company to do it and when defining the partnership is with the OP PDO partners that you partner with them and they will guide you each and every steps and you are just helping to uh, explain your vision and but when it comes to the outsourcing outsourcing is basically a different implementation partners who have the capability to develop the develop on top of salesforce and they build application for you like us we also do the uh, implementations for the different other uh, customers and we also are pdo partners and pdo expert to to give them a guidance that okay you have to do these are things to complete this from idea to a reality got it next is going to be a partnership agreement of salesforce and it's going to be like uh, some compliances some agreements which you need to take care before going for a listing and uh, whether you're uh, you're having a good team you're having those certifications or whether it comes to the uh, compliances your uh, because G Salesforce, whenever it comes with, they comes with all the compliances and the agreements. If whether you are going to publish free application or paid applications, every things they come into a detail. And what's your support and maintenance when it comes to your application? So all these agreement initially they start, uh, uh, and and now it can it comes to the PAM. We who started uh, communicating with you to understand more about your application and how you are going to proceed it. Is, is it really legal, technical or something like that? Uh, not the technical, it's more over about uh, uh, legality and understanding the basic terms and conditions basic of it. Basic terms and conditions which you need to follow when you are listing the, on an app exchange application. Makes sense. Then it goes to be design and development. That core grill of uh, uh, building a uh, building entire wall kind of things. So we utilize all Salesforce tools. We utilize uh, Salesforce best practices to make sure that it comes under the security guidelines which uh, Salesforce provide because whenever we are building an application, we need to submit it to security review. So okay. to ensure that we follow all those guidelines, we we, we make sure that uh, on a development term, development site that uh, uh, we cover all the aspects of it and all the tools which is uh, uh, benef which is giving benefit to building the application, we, we make sure of it, we have it. Got it. And uh, next is going to be like we, we completed development. Now it's going to be the testing part and the quality assurance. So designing basically includes prototyping. Yes. After prototyping, you get it into development. You just divide it into different, different small features. Hmm. You d align different, different teams to get all of these features developed, uh, yes. coded and everything. And uh, after getting uh, all of these features developed one by one, it's not a uh, waterfall model where you just completely it's agile. It's agile, absolutely agile. Uh, this is something that I wanted to focus on uh, over here. And of course you meant the same. Uh, so 
in 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 small chunks in small sprints in small deliverables we just divide the complete development after getting the architecture done and then we start de- developing, developing and delivering and those all of those uh, features mm-hmm. in order for the end user or in order for the uh, for the person who has the idea to get it tested whether it is working according mm-hmm. to the requirements that they suggested or not right so that's exactly where that's we start exactly. and uh, it goes to the testing side when uh, as the, as the sprint evolves right yes. uh, as soon as the feature gets developed it you test it you make sure that the quality uh, is assured and there are uh, it is exactly doing the job what is ex- what it is expected to do yes all right and and, and it's going to be a bug free application of course <laughs> <laughs> and that's the aim should be and that's yes. that's that is what the aim should be in uh, otherwise there's security review that is still waiting for us <laughs> so yes. Uh, l- let's talk about the next step. Next, after getting all of this, these sprint cycles in the application developed. Uh, we developed the application. We tested it properly, and now it's it's now it's ready completely packaged yes. and ready to be uh, ready to submit or ready to present to the Salesforce to get to the next step. Uh, all right, get it listed on the app exchange. Yes. All right. Uh, now, wh- now previously that when it comes to the listing, they have the business plan approval, the terminology what they change. Hmm. Now the new terminology what they introduce in our re- uh, recent changes, it's about listing approval, where they, uh, where as a part, uh, as an implementation partner or as a, a person who is publishing the uh, application, they need to submit the business ideas, what business idea that your application is solving what technical details or technical aspects you're having, your architecture, what is the architecture. And sometimes it happens that they ask for a small product demo that what exactly your product is fulfilling. So it come, all it comes to the application listing. You submit an application, it comes to a one or two week of cycle where they perform all these activities. And after that, they come to a, a agreement that, okay, you your business plan is approved. Now you go to the next step to publish your uh, or submit your application to the security review and that is all going to be on a partner portal that where you have to uh, like add your listing and uh, do all these activities and now it comes to the security review so again security review is the first of all explain us what exactly security review is so security review is a uh, like it's a guideline which or or, a, or or we can say it's a scanner it's a process it's a sc- it's a process to analyze your entire product and each and everything they understand and they in depth who, they who are sure they in here the salesforce all right the salesforce team salesforce so salesforce team, has salesforce got a team review team yeah they all already right. have a salesforce review team and they already have some uh, scanners pre-built scanners which we, we automated scanners automated scanners right. where they review code they test the vulnerabilities if you are having any vulnerabilities in your uh, in your code, application or its code application and they make sure that any compliances you're not breaking while re- performing the secu- there, there are no security breaches into the customer's yes. data there are uh, all the compliances are being followed there are no vulnerab- vulnerabilities of the application to reach out some uh, government limits or yes. something like that so all of these get scanned and the, then the Salesforce team also reviews the code that you have written down yes. whether it is doing the the job that you have described it as or it is doing even more than just that yeah so they just make sure whether it is uh, up to the mark or not for the end consumers for or, yes. or for the end users who will be using it uh, because of course if you are listing it an app uh, if if there if you are listing it, into it it onto their marketplace their credibility is also onto the onto the line yes, exactly. if uh, a, a if a not so good application gets installed into some of their customers uh, org then it is going to uh, question for salesforce, salesforce credibility as well so this, this is a serious process that salesforce gets through and the one uh, the gentleman who was asking whether we can uh, develop and build an application on our own uh, so you can of course definitely there's no doubt that you cannot but the main thing is getting the security review done is also a process in itself and it's a big enough process where uh, a lot of expert people also kind of uh, i mean go here and there so you need expertise into getting these uh, security reviews done because you need to know what all things need to like what all things you need to make sure uh, while submitting for the security review because of course it costs you some money not some but a lot of so <laughs> so the lesser the security review uh, you're going to go through the lesser amount of money that you will be investing into getting your apex uh, apex in the application listed so yeah i mean so that's why one should uh, prefer getting someone experienced guidance and consultancy uh, rather than just getting it all done by themselves and, and and but still but still it's doable 
being very honest <laughs> and along with that uh, many people don't know about the time period of the security review as well that how much time it will go for a security review and whether we are going to have the security review result or not because many times they uh, they submit their uh, application and they don't know what is the issue so it's not a case salesforce do provide a report if there is going to be a vulnerability and again it's going to be a four to uh, four to six week process where they review all the codes and after that they will provide you a result whether you are passed or not so hmm. whenever so it's a long are, process yeah whenever we are uh, going for or security review security review we need to understand that how much time it going to be invested in over there hmm and that's a good the, the more the security review uh, cycles you're going to have the more time you're going to be wasting kind of into getting the security review done so it's better to get it done on the first go itself yeah and can you help I, them go, do that yeah i i, I can easily <laughs> so uh, again one more point i need to add that uh, there are some instances that once you submit for security review and it's got passed and next time it's going to be instant security review pass you don't need to a go for a 4 to 6 week next time it's okay. the first investment you have to put it got it got it so so later they must be only checking the challenges that they are facing you can just silent it yes. what is it for <laughs> it's allowed <laughs> for drinking water <laughs> yes <laughs> all right uh so yeah uh link your solution no no not link your solution uh so 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 the second time you put it into the security review process, do they only review? Uh, I mean, do they only review the challenges that they've raised to you, or they again go through and scan the complete application? If your application is not passed on first time, hmm? then they uh, run the entire process again to review whole application. But then, how how does it happen in the in in, in less time then? So if your application is passed, then it's going to be a less time. No, no, see, see, see. First time you've created a. Uh, you, I created a package. Huh? And I submitted for the security review, hmm? and they come up with vulnerabilities. Hmm? Okay. And second. So now are they going to? And in the second time, let's say you have. Second time, it's going to be lesser time. Lesser time. What? What I mean that it's going to be a two to three week of process. They decrease because they already scanned or. Huh? So some, now they're going. They're only going to test your application based on the vulnerabilities vulnerabilities that they have suggested you. Yes. And they they are not going to test the rest of the application no. which they have already reviewed earlier. They All they right. they reduces the time frame. Ha 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 ha. Makes sense. Link your solution. So uh, previously we have the uh, on on app exchange that uh, we need to add a, a solution on apps. but now they change it to label as a link your solution where you can update the versions where you can change the uh, application names and all the things which you can uh, connect over the over the listing and live it so it's going to be listing your application connecting your technology with your business plans or listing then through that you can make it publish on app exchange makes sense next and maintenance and support and maintenance support is is a regular process recurring process where you have to uh, maintain your applications and make sure you provide a good support of your there are bug fixes happening there are challenges there with are the challenges customers with the are customers say. happening and you are catering all the uh, challenges from the customers you are make sure the reviews are getting proper on your listing and along with that if you are creating a new versions you publish it timely and inform your or uh, uh, do the marketing of your features new features accordingly got it uh, so there are two senses that i want to put it into uh, testing and quality assurance of the app exchange uh, idea to reality life cycle and these two senses are uh, See it's not the regular testing or the quality assurance that we do while we create an app exchange application you need to just not test an application onto the same environment where where you are developing it you need to test it with different licenses you need to test it with different integrations that are done on different uh, yes. platforms or different orgs because you're not creating it for one org you're creating it for hundreds or thousands of those orgs and if not tested well on enough of these orgs it is not going to function as expected right because there are it should be compatible it should be compatible with each and every version of salesforce each and every licensing models everything right so there are so many nuances so we just don't need to make sure that whether our code is working fine or not we have to also make sure whether it is working fine here or not or not here or not here or not so there are 
like tens of these things that we also have to make sure uh, which is exactly where this maintenance and support uh, is very much required because a lot of time what happens is whenever new you onboard new customers and there are already some customized implementation that are being uh, that are implemented into their org uh, which they came up with some some challenges that your your package is, is contradicting with our solutions <sighs> and like that so exactly sure. so in in all of those situations uh, after even after creating your application you need a team to implement it into their org yes. and resolve all of those issues which is exactly what we do for we a do lot of our clients yes. so <laughs> so so uh, in order to get it implemented and in order to even get it a little, little bit tweaked Please. sometimes uh, in order to get it adopted and uh, adapted, adapted into the salesforce org of your client uh, yes. you need this maintenance support so and hence it is not a recurring uh, hence it's not a one time job it's a recurring one which is the myth we were talking about what were you saying and it's important it's very important all right let's now talk about types of solutions it's very important a lot of people out there think that app exchange uh, is only for the apps or for the saas apps or for, or for the apps that you want to use into the salesforce org but it is not let's try to cover up uh, the different types of solutions that are there in salesforce app exchange or that salesforce app exchange supports so basically there are different type of one is going to be a flow solution where we package the flows and we we design give us an example customized flows so let's take an example that if you want uh, you want to do a credit pay, credit card payment and you want to connect it through the any any apis so you design the flows you're not writing any lwc you're not writing any any uh, aura components you have a flow you have your screen flows it's working and you package it and connect through api it's going to be a flow solution flow based solution where you are not building any custom code you're not writing any custom code and and so basically the, let's let's take an example of this uh, all of these real estate agents that we were talking about right now with an example in order to onboard a customer in order for uh, in order to get them uh, uh, in order to just show them a property or in order to get them uh, uh, i mean in order to just display them a property we need a form to be submitted and all of these real estate agents need 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 uh, need or want uh, their customers to go through a particular flow and in order to uh, build that or in order to just i mean get this thing done they do not want uh, like uh, someone customizing it for themselves if they if they can get a pre built solution for the same uh, they would rather use that solution uh, rather than getting it cust uh, custom built yes. so in those situations where you are just creating a flow solution where using flows you are uh, creating a business process automation for a particular industry or for a for a particular kind of business yes. then you can create flow solutions right exactly yes all right App exchange applications. Uh, app exchange application is the full fledged application where we, where we are uh, combining any UIs, custom UIs, any automations, any uh, you can see integrations with the third party platforms and anything which comes with multiple solutions or multiple integrations and and customization on on LWC and any other other frameworks. So it's going to be packaged in one solution, which is going to be app exchange applications. And uh, we have multiple app exchange applications which we already uh, uh, listed on app exchange. Some of some, some of our of own, some of our clients, and everything. And so these, this is what we have about the app exchange applications. And then it comes to the lightning data. So lightning data is also very important and very crucial because it work on already uh, already stored data. It work on already present data, live data which you are already having in your Salesforce system and based on this lightning data solutions you can identify that whether uh, this this data is giving me some good insights or not whether you can uh, identify the intelligence of the what data you are having and let's take an example that if any business or any lead generation uh, uh, business having so they are generating thousands of leads and they want to understand that whether it's leads very important or how what is the scoring of a lead based on the data already presented in the system so at that moment lightning data solutions is a good part where you can identify the uh, uh, quality of the data and where you can prioritize that uh, uh, data to get it next and next is going to be a bold solution bold solution is basically about uh, uh, majorly it's for themes for the uh, experience clouds 
these are nothing but pre-built templates for salesforce yes. communities these are the themes which which any other customer or any other person who is building communities they can import it and they can utilize it so any e-commerce vendor wants a typical time type yeah. of yeah. uh i mean the theme for uh their salesforce communities even, we even can just get it B2B, listed b2b marketplace they can huh. utilize it and uh, if anybody is utilizing b2b uh commerce cloud then they can import to your bold solution and start utilizing it makes sense app exchange components so app exchange components is going to be a custom pages custom components or or uh, uh, custom blocks or where you can utilize in plug and play you adapt with your data models or your your data entries and you just use, utilize it you don't need to write much of code on it you just plug and play and drag and drop those components and utilizes and right. many other uh, uh standard components are already there in the salesforce but if our biz, our component is solving anything then it's a uh, combined packet got it uh next is how you can generate revenue from salesforce app exchange marketplace so here are some stats about it uh there are more than 8000 pre built apps and experts it's just not apps it's also experts uh, who are out there of uh, uh i mean of on salesforce app exchange and 11 million plus installs uh, across every de- uh, each department industry and product and more than uh, 150k or 150000 uh, salesforce uh, customers who are using salesforce uh, on a regular basis uh, which you can actually market and uh, most of the times they go for solutions on to uh, salesforce app exchange only so that's typically what it is then here are some more uh, stats about it 91% of customers use app exchange apps uh and 71% of salesforce customers install the best apps from app exchange of course that's going to be true because over here salesforce credibility is also onto the line and they do not want anybody or anybody's solution or anybody's implementation to uh like do something bad with their data right you want to have some thanks thanks <laughs> so uh, we have famous brands that have application on app exchange there are some of the names which we can see docusign adobe box slack conga and ring central there are the good amount of uh, customer base they are already having and then it's going to be a pricing model that uh, what pricing model there are different type of pricing model on salesforce app exchange which uh, they support it's going to be a free Paid. I guess we have to talk about all of these brands right which are already using this. So uh, can we can we go back a little bit about it? DocuSign, Adobe, Box, Slack, Conga, Ring Central. So see all of these appli- all of these people have their own have their have their own applications in existence even without Salesforce. Yes. So they are just trying to capture the market that Salesforce already oh, has. Yeah. right yes. so, so they don't want to lose on to their customers who are already al- already using salesforce of course slack is now acquired by salesforce but all of the other people have their own solutions which are now integrated with salesforce with the help of app exchange applications yeah so it's it's about the solution on the salesforce side that uh, many of their customers who want who are utilizing a salesforce but they independently having docusign as well but they are not having a, in, any interconnections so they provide a integrated solutions on top of it with the help of an app exchange application yes. exactly all right now let's talk about the pricing model that supports a uh, salesforce app exchange uh, this is going to be very interesting and this is the kind of information that you are probably not going to get uh, anywhere out there even after a lot of searches so uh, make sure to pay close attention to this number one is free we have free. easy incentivize we had we had easy yeah. roll up and we had charge on as well previously earlier re charge on was also free where yes. uh, you're just doing it for uh, the charity yes. or probably uh, to make out uh, y- yourself as a brand out there yes. or just for uh, fun right uh, whatever the reason is but you can also launch some applications as free and typically uh, all of these applications which already have their own solution and want just want an integration with the salesforce crm as well they and as they, they they become free they they completely come free because yes. people are already using uh, their, their solution and their platform and they just want a platform to connect it to connect it so so they do not want their customers to pay on salesforce again in order for it, uh, for their application to be integrated with it right and salesforce understand that as well that what their Haan. intention to bring it Exactly. So that's how it goes. Then, then next comes paid. Can you explain that? So paid is going to be that you need to pay for that application to utilize it. It's going to be uh, let's let's take an example of charge on that for uh, utilizing the features you need to pay for it and 
it starts on having the different different uh, integrations as well so along with that uh, paid is basically for the features that if you want to go for a 10 features or 20 features you have to pay x amount for this and this is going to be a paid application which is going to be on a recurring basis on a whether whatever plan that the application is having but it's going to be a pay per use application and next is going to be paid add-on paid add-on is basically that uh, the application is free application is free but the solution and uh, external solutions which is combining or which is backing up your solution those are going to be charging let's for example that if you're if you're having a solution which is utilizing any server any google server or any other platform uh, uh, server then that uh, company is only going to charge for your servers not the applications application is totally free got so it that's why it's called as a paid add-on add-on all right so you just pay uh, basis or basis onto the usage if you use like let's say x amount of storage Yes. You do not have to pay, but if you increase that X amount of storage, you might have to pay. So that's a paid yeah. add-on kind of a thing. But it's also not not just storage, but other things as well. Yes, it's also about features as well. If yes. you want to use uh, two features, it's free. But if you want to increase it to do five to six features, uh, some of the exclusive features do we have. Mm -hmm. In order to use those exclusive features, you have to pay extra. Yes, All and right. this is also part of a freemium as well. Acha. So freemium is basically about the limited. Uh, solutions mm -hmm. which is free like for example uh, that you have two or three features or you are doing a one time payment is free but if you are going for a recurring that's going to be a, a add on which you have to add on feature which you have to pay for it and then utilize it got it that's going to be a free one. so these are the four uh, different different pricing models that yes. one can opt for in order to get their app in the application live in all right now let's talk about how do uh, I mean all right if you are making a free application, then uh, definitely you are not earning any money out of it. Then in that case, Salesforce might not be getting anything. We are going to talk about it later, yes. of course. Uh, but if you are doing like if if your if your application is paid, mm. then how 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 Salesforce shares the revenue uh, that you earn through its app exchange platform as a platform fees or whatever? Mm -hmm. Because every platform does that. Uh, to be very honest, <laughs> uh, Salesforce must be doing that as well. So can you please give us a little bit uh, or throw some light onto how the revenue sharing with Salesforce gets done? Yes, definitely. So basically when it comes to the revenue sharing, mm -hmm. so there are different models which uh, Salesforce do the revenue sharing and there are pr different pricing plans. So initially when uh, like after this last release, they have their different pricing structure when it on the, uh, when we go for a paid application, they have one time initial review fee, which is about two two $2,550, which is a one time fee. And then it's going to be an annual fee for the security review for $150. That is a annual fee which uh, uh, for all the paid applications and nothing is going to be on the free but when it comes to the latest pricing model it's going to be first attempt is going to be free of cost that if you are lucky and <laughs> if you are <laughs> praying to God then you are going to have a free of cost in first attempt if your security review is passed but if not then every attempt you have to pay for triple nine dollars and generally people say that lucky people go for a first round of for free of cost but sometimes it happens that uh, one uh, one or two uh, re attempt is, is going to be <laughs> but we make sure that it will go for it has never happened with us never happened with us all right huh, i mean i, I completely know about and it and along with that uh, uh, as you can see the revenue sharing hmm. it's about the 15 percent for the icv partners uh, for net revenue of your having so let's say if you're if you're earning hundred thousand hundred thousand dollars mm -hmm. uh, per year from your Salesforce application or uh, Salesforce app exchange application, how much of that is going to be gone to Salesforce and it's how going much? Fifteen percent. And that is fifteen thousand dollars. Yes. All right, and eighty five thousand dollars is going to be yours. Yes. All right, makes sense. And by the way, uh, all of these informations are subject to change. Uh, as we have already described, the the previous pricing was this, and then the uh, latest pricing is this. So. Uh, please. It varies, from, it varies time. from time to time, but not that often. Uh, right now, it is this. That is something that we can assure you of. But still, uh, do not rely on to all of these things. Go back to the forward-looking statement. Next and probably the last thing that we want to discuss in today's engine. Not second last, third last. All right. How Salesforce App Exchange can boost your application's marketing. 
all right this so since the app exchange has got seo driven app listing optimizations it's it it works similarly like google and every other search engines uh, whenever a particular person is searching for any application uh, on onto the salesforce app exchange they just provide the best results uh, based on to the listings that they have done so the better the listing the better the chances of uh, getting visible to the customers who are searching on top of it uh, like it helps you it helps you with the marketing collaterals and resources it helps you with app exchange marketing program which is a, of course a paid program not a free one but helps you a lot in order to market your app exchange application so that's very much required and customer reviews ratings which help you go ahead go above and beyond in order uh, for in order to act all of those reviews as a word of mouth from other clients in order to act as a as what as a trusted as ha tr uh, in order to create solution. trust between the other people who are also looking for similar solutions right uh, and efficient lead capturing funnel and everything that is something that salesforce provide how does salesforce help to manage the features and customers in their license data so this is something very important by the way uh, a lot of people think about creating an application and everything but once the application gets live very few out there in the market and by the way a lot of developers know how to write down the code and uh, build an application but the one thing that all of them in fact the best of the best people out there struggle with is uh, how to manage the features and in which like let's say your application has got three different uh, models basic pro expert levels and in all of these three levels there are different types of features that you are allowing the user to use based on to the payments that they are making uh, according to the versions that that you have of your application so managing all of these licensing the features and uh, i mean different I mean, plans different plans of your application is very different and uh, very few people out there know how to actually manage it so jagrat over here our very own salesforce app exchange expert is going to help us understand how do you actually manage the features the customers uh, and by the way sometimes your customers are not even paying you uh, so in that case how you can uh, uh, disallow them to use your application and uh, sometimes when they uh, you have, when you're just onboarding a new customer how you can allow them to use your application uh all of these things is something that we are going to discuss in our very own favorite salesforce app exchange expert jagrat is going to help us understand that a little better in a technical uh know how okay so thank let's you let's start with it so it's You're going welcome. to be uh, different different applications which already salesforce provide which is a feature management application which we call a fme license management application lma and channel order application which is coa and we also have a environmental hub which help you to uh, manage all these features so if i talk about the feature management application so basically as you mentioned that uh, we have different different plans and on different plans we need to bifurcate different features so this application will help to bifurcate those features those plans and you can define those parameters that okay these 10 uh, features these 10 features is dependent on these 10 uh, uh, 10 parameter values if you allow yes to all the parameters those features are going to be enabled if i if i disallow any one of them then it's not going to be visible in your uh, salesforce or which or in your salesforce instance so that uh, through fma we can manage the uh, features then it comes to the lma lma is basically about giving or granting or Uh, restricting the licenses or managing the licenses, which you can say that uh, if you want ten seats or ten ten licenses on your uh, Salesforce instance, I can uh, do through LMA. And uh, if you are having any uh, issues in your Salesforce instance or in your applications, then as as we grant the access, so granting an access, getting into login to the customer org and reviewing them their problems. So that is also we can do through LMA. and next is going to be coa coa is basically for primarily for the paid applications where we uh, have a orders for the customers that okay they want 10 basic plan license or 20 premium plan license so we create uh, coa records uh, order records and this order records is, is shared with salesforce as well because we define what amount we are getting what percentage they are going to have it and based on that the so all of the order monetary sharing monetary is done monetary sharing is going to be done through salesforce through channel order app got it and next is going to be environmental hub it's it's recently added for the 2gb uh, package applications or 2gb uh, packages that we can uh, what is the 2gb application it's a different 1gb and 2gb it's right. upgraded version of uh, of the packaging solutions hmm. and uh, 
by using the environmental hub we can develop and design into multiple different scratch offs which is the sfdx uh, term uh, uh, ecosystem which we can say and from different scratch offs we can maintain on on git and and the version controls as well so so that it would be easy and not dependent on any org your entire managed package solution is on the git and you have the repository you can easily create a, a managed package from one command and it's it's very easy to maintain it now by using the environmental hub got it all right now let's talk about how to choose the right app exchange app development partner so do you have any uh, guide about it so there are different uh, uh, parameters where you can identify that who is the right person who is the right partners to develop our applications like having the correct sales force certifications first of all they need to have an experience yes they, they really need to have good experience into getting a lot of applications yes. specifically into a typical industry that you're trying to build a solution of uh and uh, they, they need to have an application not just to build the application mm-hmm. but also to get it listed yes so ask for the applications that they have built they have worked on they've they've worked on yes. other than that there are sales force certifications uh you need to actually check mm-hmm. them they are important uh yes. not but ju- just please don't rely on to all of them uh then the business understanding exactly the industry expertise that we are talking about uh whether they are, whether they are even able to understand uh i mean what you're trying to explain them um and uh, draft it out the way uh, you want them to that's also an important part and one thing that one uh, everyone needs to take care of is that is it easy to get work done from them or not because if it is not easy to get an application get developed by them it is definitely not going to be easy to get get this application maintained and continuously supported by them getting a business understanding is important as hmm. aspect to convert that into a technology because if you're hmm. not understanding what exactly vision or what in this what purpose it's solving then you're not able to provide a best solution of it ha huh, but what i'm talking about is over here is like let's say uh someone connected with jagrat hmm. someone is getting an application developed with jagrat hmm. and if they are facing any problem with jagrat while the development is happening then in that case be wary of it because yes. uh, it's not going to be just the development that uh, you'll be doing with jagrat it's probably the maintenance and the support that you're going to be doing with jagrat as well because you'll be left with no other choice than jagrat because he knows every he knows uh, everything on your uh, applications and he can solve in 5 minutes as in comparison to any other person any other person and and also uh, i mean you 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 need to figure out someone not just on to the technical uh, technical expertise but also onto the professional behavior that they have because that is going to build a long term relationship yes. and the long term relationship is exactly what is required in order to develop a product yes. uh because you need post launch support as well so assess them on that level as well that's very important and then the development cycle knowledge exactly as we described in the sprint planning and everything agile, agile. <laughs> and now let's talk, now let's talk about what is a pdo partner and why you should prefer working with one So, so first of all what exactly is pdo partner pdo is a product development outsourcers that who have a specialized in 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 their subject matter expert and they know of each and everything about salesforce and they are aware about the recent changes and recent technologies of uh, of salesforce and they know how to convert the application very well they uh, they have gone through all the salesforce technology tools for they are already build for the other application so they have good experience of what things to do and what not so it's it's good to have it to identify the pdo and make and whenever it comes to any product development we should consider pdo first so that we have a trust there are there are very few partners out there who are salesforce pdo partners first of all yes. pdo partners are basically the product development outsourcers what that basically means is the people who expert who have the expertise of product development on top of the salesforce app exchange they are not just the salesforce implementation partners or the just go to implementation partners a, a lot of time what happens is the best of the best salesforce implementation partners are not good not product good. development organizations product development life cycle is, is totally way different way different than just the implementation in yes. implementation you one needs to understand how their business functions but in product development the one needs to have the complete technical understanding as well as the industry understanding in order to solve that particular problem so it's a very different job all together and there are very few people out there who are uh, pdos uh, including us of course yes. in texa uh, and this this Uh, like working with the pdo partner is going to align you or is going to allow you 
to make sure that no yeah, these people actually know what they are talking about and these people are the right kind of people who can actually get an application developed and delivered on top of app exchange because they expertise into it yes. rather than just just the just another way. implementation partners yeah. or consulting it's, partners it's very say. different it's very different than that and they need uh, they don't just need salesforce development expertise they also need app exchange expertise as well in order to get this listed business plan yeah, so this different, and that different things which is updating day by day so they are they they are aware about how the listing is going to be what is the process how how much time it going to take so not any other implementation partner know about these things exactly so that that's basically what the reason is and now finally we have got the time for question and answers so if anyone out there who is still live on to the webinar uh, can feel free to ask any questions that they have uh, related to this oh we have got such such great viewership we have not dropped any of the users who are watching right any thank you so much guys for watching i mean <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much i think either you are so good or you are so loyal to us <laughs> something on something on those lines <laughs> something happened i mean we have never lo- uh, i mean not even a single a, user we've done a good job we've done a good job i mean <laughs> clap for you <laughs> all right we have some questions all right you know what is the exact termination date of process builder and workflow rules yeah we're not sure about the dates of it but of course it got terminated right i mean Uh, why would be, you why would it's, it's not going to come ha huh, it's not going to come into the any of the certification exams right so why <laughs> are you why are you even trying to uh, remember it then comes is uh, any resource to generate second generation packet and past security review it's already it's already on the uh, help guide of uh, so Apex can you please repeat Apex. the question first of all So it's any and resources to generate second generation package, which is two GB packet, and past uh, past security review. So hmm. basically, it's going to be how you can develop two GB packages and how you can uh, pass the security review. Hmm. So b- passing the security review is all is is same. That hmm. you submit an app technology on the listing, you follow the process, and you submit for a security review. Hmm. And building the two GB is is way too different because now it. in in you have to enable a devop and then build a entire scratch org environment and build a customize or build a different different features on a different platforms so it's maintaining a git over there so it's a different uh, process which is already defined by salesforce in their help guide and through that we can follow and and we also uh, started in learning from there got so it they can do that uh so another question you uh, you highlighted uh, how to find out best uh, how much potential customers would pay for my app so uh, see it's it's all about uh, whenever it is about getting the amount finalized uh, either first of all you just see that what someone who has already got a similar solution is charging for it and whether there are customers coming on to it or not and if you really want to compete with them whether you want to compete it with them on the quality of the solution or onto the pricing points and if you are competing onto the pricing points you have to set a price a little lower than them than them uh, in order to even start into out there it's a com- competitor analysis it's a co- yeah it's a competitor analysis that uh, exactly how can i forget that <laughs> <laughs> you first need to do the competitor analysis in order to identify uh, what the right amount of money or what what is uh, what is going to be the right amount of uh money that you should charge in order for your uh, solution or application and if you do not have any competitor uh, competing into that marketplace the chances are number 1 um it's not a viable solution <laughs> otherwise there would have been any or probably you might had the innovative idea uh for the coming market out there in the world so you just set any price and you just ask any customer or you just ask any customers to pay for it and if uh, some of the people are willing to pay for it it is worth that much and if it is not worth that much you just reduce the price uh, to a level where customers are really interested oh, customers who are really interested to use your product are willing to pay what exactly you are expecting there is no other way to set any other, uh, to set any pricing and any pricing for any application this is something that we have learned the hard way and we want to <laughs> give it to you give it to you the easiest way possible so hence this is what it is how can i advertise on app uh, an, an app exchange so see there is an app exchange marketing program that we talked about so it's a paid program in that they allow uh, you to actually market it uh, a little better uh, the listing gets a little up up and everything so that's how you can do it over here yeah uh, then comes what Rahul Jangid, uh, during code review, do the support have access to our code? Of course, uh, they no. do. No, 
Do, uh, all right, we have created a managed package. Managed package. Managed package. They do not Security. have the access to our code. So I'll I'll clarify on this that uh, they they review the code, but they cannot change it because it's already a managed so during code review uh, they do not have the access to the code all right can we publish an app just for some specific countries we can yeah we can it's, it's not for the specific country it's about the uh, app exchange marketplace anybody any country we can no but he w- what he's asking is that if you just want this application to be live yeah, on the us we market can we can maintain it yes. we do not want it to be available to the europe customers uh yeah we can do it we can or we are not sure we are not sure but we are 99 percent sure but we you can still come back to us because we know it's, you work we can we can maintain on the listing all right uh if an application it's free but later it changed to a price will the customers who already installed it for free uh go to have to pay it or continue we already, we already discussed answer. it in de- uh in, yeah, in it in detail answered. uh you just please go back to almost 20 minutes uh in our webinar and that's exactly where we discussed it in detail so you're going to get that answer over there and also during the code yes. review does do they also uh they also go through if our app is breaching government's policy of course they th- i mean yeah this, they, they compliance this is exactly what they check they verify all the compliances that you are fulfilling or, or not or not all right uh can you give resource to learn version control system for app you're building yes we can do that we can do that we'll we'll upload it later on the down down in the comments uh, jagrat is going to make sure to do that if he doesn't uh you just make sure that you're providing the comment and uh accordingly uh you can hold him accountable <laughs> any other questions do we have all right now now on linkedin uh hi when we can sales for developer fresher opening yeah we do have some uh salesforce uh developer openings in, at syntexa so anyone who's interested can apply for the same how do i know if an app is available to test drive test drive beta te- beta testing you're uh, talking about if he's talking about test drive or a free trial because on salesforce we can give a 30 days or we can define the time i think he's ta- he's talking about test drive is beta testing he's talking about yeah beta testing I so how can I know? Yes, yeah, so they, can they have the features on the listing itself. We can uh, enable the test drives, and then they can, then they can utilize if any cus- if any application is uh, providing it. It's on the listing. Got it. Uh, now that we are convinced that App Exchange is the right place, how to make App Rock and App Exchange? Uh, any tips? App Rock onto the App Exchange. So see, it's. What we believe into is, uh, Nirvik, I know you and uh, I know we have had a conversation in Hyderabad and you're an amazing guy. Uh, uh, Would love to have a chat with you whenever you're free. Uh, So let's talk about it. Uh, In order to rock an application onto App Exchange, there's only one thing that we can do. If your customers are shouting about your application, that's the only way and that's the best way to get it out there in the market for a particular industry or for a particular solution. I know it's very, very difficult. Uh, And I know you you continuously trying to get your heads around the customers uh, as you're leading the sales for an organization. Uh, You you know it, it's very difficult than just saying uh, for it. But at the end of the day, if your app is continuously trying to solve the problem of the business user who is really facing that problem, and uh, and also trying to update it according to the new challenges that they face uh, the customers shout about it and the moment they start shouting about it is exactly when you skyrocket all of your limits so i think one needs to focus on to solving the real problems uh, in such a way that no one ever imagined and that's the that's the only and the best tip that i think we have you know uh, to get this app exchange application uh, rock in the app exchange marketplace hope that answers nirvik uh, awesome live session with rich and helpful explanation thank you so much uh thanks so much i'm not sure whether I, i'll pronounce your name right or not so i don't want to take a chance <laughs> Laksha, are there any specific technical requirements or security considerations for applications listed on there are so many there are so many there are security guidelines there are security already guidelines already that salesforce provides based yes. on to which only you have to prepare your application yes. which then goes to, to the make security sure that they follow when when we submit for the security review yeah otherwise How, they reject it <laughs> how can i track and analyze the performance of my application on salesforce app exchange the numbers say it or say it all <laughs> yeah. how many people Ma- th- there is marketing analytics also which is present onto salesforce app exchange uh, which allows you to uh, get the insights of the of the what 
in terms of the which countries they are uh, live what are the search complete uh, analytics complete analytics you do not need any other tool in order to uh, i mean get the data up and live and this is how you can analyze can you give resource to learn version control ha we have already yes. covered this we are going to provide it to you yeah. we do not have any more comments on the youtube we do have it can you just what about solutions for different clouds or all right by the way uh, for commerce cloud also uh, earlier it, uh, we used to call this as uh, uh cartridge commerce cloud cartridge development but now when the commerce merged. cloud they merge they are both merge uh, app exchange marketplace and we can link the solution of b2c cartridges in uh, app exchange marketplace itself we don't need to go any other platform to to link it so now if you want to create any any solution for a commerce cloud uh for commerce cloud you do not need to create a cartridge you can create an app exchange application only or you just need to work on app ex uh, even if you develop the cartridge it is going to get listed onto app exchange that's all what i'm trying to say so it's no different valuable learning for everyone thank you so much ricky what happened you retracted the message pranch <laughs> <laughs> what about solutions for different clouds yeah so i i know i knew what you were talking about anything else any one linkedin everything all right uh, it was pleasure having you jagrat on the show uh, on the webinar or whatever you want to call it uh, here are some references that we also want would like to show where from where we ha might have uh, included some of the information onto this and uh, after looking at these all of these references we would like to thank you all for staying to the course and joining us onto this webinar we enjoyed really uh, so much and thank you so much jagrat for giving val your valuable insights and not just you but all, uh, all of the team who helped us uh, put this together because with, without, them, without them we would not have uh, got this thing together all the people sitting in here and also harshita who helped you uh, create this yes. presentation so uh, thank you uh, thank, thank you so much Thank you. Thank you so much, all the viewers. And in order to download the presentation deck, uh, whatever we have presented over here, there is going to be a link down there, uh, somewhere in the comments or in the description, from where you can download it. So just check it out. Thank you so much. Thank See you in the next webinar. We are going to uh, make sure to uh, come up with more more of such. Mm, probably this month. <laughs> She's saying next <laughs> month, but we wanted wanted to be done this month. But we'll see. Thank you so much. Bye bye.